So this quote, fatigue makes cowards of us all, has been attributed to Vince Lombardi, that's how I learned it, uh, but also I think to General Patton, and I think there's also even a derivative back to the time of Shakespeare. But that's what we're talking about today in habit number six, uh, and it's one that pro goalies get a failing grade at, uh, and it has to do with how we train for fatigue, so that we can handle fatigue, so that we don't become cowards, uh, that our legs don't make cowards of us in the crease. So, as always, quick version is going to be on IGTV. I'm going to have a circuit that you can do. If you want to see that, then IGTV is the place for you. YouTube, I'll give you the circuit as well, but I'll explain a little bit more the science behind, you know, what happens and, and why we want to train this way. So you decide what's best for you. Uh, I'm going to go down into the lab and let's get started. So here we'll take a little bit of a deep dive into the, the why behind the what. And so the, the quote we started with was, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And so what does that mean? Because you'll be like, well, I don't feel scared when I get tired. And sometimes actually it is a little scary because you're like, oh my gosh, you know, unless they clear the zone, I can't keep up with the play anymore. My legs feel like they're filled with like a quick set cement every time I move. So, but what I'm talking about is, and what you'll see if you video yourself, you see it in NHL games, um, even see it, I see it in off ice training all the time, is you start to stand up in your legs. And so, you know, you might start the game down in your nice, you know, sort of low position where you have all that power potential. So when I'm loaded and I want to move, you know, I have, boom, I have all kinds of power potential from that position. But as I stand up now, I have no, very little power potential. You don't realize you're doing it, so you're not thinking to yourself, oh, I'm just going to stand up and give my legs a rest and be slow and get beat to the, you know, get, get beaten by the shot here. Your body just does it, and what often happens is you'll bend forward at your hips, so now my eyes are still basically the same height from the ice, so I feel my, my brain is kind of telling me, yeah, you're nice and low, but again, I have no power potential in that position. Um, and you do it in training too. I was actually watching a YouTube video the other day where a guy was doing his off ice goalie workout, you know, and doing some like uh, single leg squat drops. But it was all coming from, you know, a forward bend. There was no bend in the knee. So th it just illustrates that even in our off ice training, we can practice these habits and learn how to load our legs. So instead of getting fatigued, coming forward, we need to learn to stay low and keep that power potential. The other part of it is that sometimes when, you know, you're zipping around the crease and the puck's moving and you're moving and you're tracking it, it doesn't feel that bad. But then maybe the puck is sort of outside and you're staying low and it's just getting passed a little back and forth. So it's just small movements, but then there's static holds or someone, you know, they have the puck in behind the net and you're on a post hold and you're stuck there for a while. That's when you really start to feel your legs just seizing right up and you all know exactly what I'm describing here. So, you know, why does that happen? Well, it happens because our, our muscles are running out of oxygen. They're not, they can't produce the energy to hold that contraction fast enough. And so then we're getting, um, you know, having to go to anaerobic metabolism, we're getting lactic acid build up, which I don't really think is the burning that you feel. Lactic acid actually dissociates really, really quickly in the muscle, but for whatever reason, that's why we're getting it. And part of the reason we're getting it is because we don't ever train there. We're not comfortable there. We get a little panicky or our, not, again, not us consciously, but our body overreacts a little bit because we're not used to that. So we need to fix our training. Well, how do we commonly, or how do most goalies commonly do their cardio training? They might go for a run, they might bike. Even if you do high intensity intervals, it doesn't train you for these static holds. When your muscles are working, Okay, here's the little fun physiology fun fact. <laughs> uh, our arteries, which take blood for the most part away from our heart, um, out to our extremities, they actually have some muscle in them that helps sort of pump the blood and move the blood through our whole system. They have, yeah, they have a little bit of muscle in there. 
our veins don't really have that. So our veins have um, these valves, sort of one-way valves, so that when I use my muscles and move, the blood kind of helps get squirted back up the chain and then it can't fall back down again. So it's sort of that muscle pumping action that helps blood return to, you know, my heart and my lungs and get reoxygenated and send back out again. So when I'm in a static position, I don't get the benefit of that muscle pumping. So I'm not helping that blood return so that blood is kind of stuck there and it's that deoxygenated blood and my muscles need the oxygen so that's why they start screaming like hey move and you know and then you'll find yeah once you get moving a little bit again you might still be tired but it feels a bit better. So that's why that happens. So uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of the science behind why you feel that way. Uh, let's bring Instagram back in. We'll wait for you. Okay, Instagram, you guys, you guys are the guys sit at the back of the class. You're too cool to know all the science behind it. <laughs> so you can, you'll come back in now and we'll, we'll just get basically to the meat and potatoes. So basically when we do our cardio training, as I was saying, you might run or bike or whatever. You might even do interval training. You might do agility ladder training. Uh, you might do box hops, things that are really hard, that really make you tired. So you think, gosh, this has got to be working. But you're not getting those static holds. You're not training your body to understand and to put mind over matter that, yes, even though my legs are screaming right now because I'm in that static hold position and physiologically there are things going on, which those of us on YouTube know and you guys on Instagram don't know, <laughs> that are making my legs scream, I actually can still produce power from that position. I know that it's uncomfortable, but it's not fatal. I know that I can still produce power even though it feels that way because I've trained like this. So we're going to start by you know, getting our energy system going, by, by building a little bit of fatigue, and then we're going to go into a static hold. We're going to start with a knee recovery, lateral hop. You can use your stick just to see, hey, am I keeping my stick down? Am I doing weird things like turning it like this or you know anything like that? So it's going to be a knee recovery, lateral hop, boom, shuffle back. Then I'm just going to put this knee down. I really don't want you kind of slamming back down into a butterfly and I've seen a lot of Instagram videos popping up lately people who are you know hey here's a workout you can do at home that I just thought up and just it's adding a lot of wear and tear it's not really helping so just leave that part out um, we don't need to be doing that over and over again so we're gonna go for 10 seconds hop shuffle back hop shuffle back Pop, shuffle back for 10 seconds. Then you're going to come right in to a low, ready stance, sitting down in your hips, keeping your chest tall, thinking, where should my glove be? Where should my blocker be? What's my stick doing? I'm also radiating tension through my whole body, and I'm going to hold that for 10 seconds. Then I'm going to come to the other side. Lateral hop, quick shuffle back. Lateral hop, quick shuffle back. Lateral hop. Ah, I dinged it up. Lateral hop, quick shuffle back. Lateral hop, quick shuffle back. And then right in to my static hold. So you can see already, and that's only like 30 seconds in, now my brain starts getting a little bit screwed up. I dinked up that second, about second rep going this way. So you can see how, okay, now it's getting harder to process information. You can see how already my energy system is really fired up. So we're going to go 10 seconds, lateral hop shuffle, lateral hop shuffle. 10 seconds, low static hold. Going the other way, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and then static hold, 10 seconds. You're going to do that two times through, twice for each of those. And this is all one circuit, so as soon as you finish, those that two sets through of that then you're going to go into an rvh hold but your back knee is going to be just just off the ground so you're going to come in here you're going to have a little bit of a lean let me move the stick so you can see what i'm doing so you'll have a little bit of a lean it's not going to be you know exactly the same position but you're going to come in and just have that knee off the ground holding that position again i know my toe wouldn't be like that on the ice. I know it would be flatter, but that's going to be so much stress through your ankle 
and your knee, then we're gonna bring it up a little bit. And you're gonna hold that for 20 seconds on that side. Then you're gonna come to the other side, hold that for 20 seconds on the other side. Then we're gonna work just a little bit of full body dexterity, going pancake to your feet. So we'll, go, we'll start pancake to your feet, back down, pancake to your feet, back down, pancake to your feet, back down for 20 seconds. Then you'll go bottom half split squat for 10 seconds. So just, so my knee almost slightly taps up and down for 10 seconds. If you have dumbbells at home, you can hold on to those. Then you're gonna hold for 10 seconds. Staying nice and strong, irradiating tension through your whole body. Then you'll switch legs. 10 seconds, just in the bottom half, and then a 10 second hold, irradiating tension. And you'll do that three times on each side. Then we'll come back just to a straight, almost knee down lateral bound. So my knee, this knee is just hovering. I'm gonna go side to side, two, three. Then I'm gonna hold here for 10 seconds. Then again, I'll go boom, boom. Really trying to explode out. Hold here for 10 seconds. I'm gonna do that four times with a 10 second hold after each set of three hops. So here's what I want you to do, because this is a tough, tough workout. And I want it to be good quality as well. So you need to be smart. You need to be a smart athlete. Remember, the goal isn't to make this as hard as possible. The goal is to teach your body how to still have quality movement even under fatigue. So if you're getting so tired that you're getting very sloppy or that you're standing up in your legs, which is exactly what we're trying not to do, and get out your phone and video yourself doing it, but if that's you, then take a rest. Give yourself at least two minutes of rest. Just, yes, just in the middle of the workout. So, you know, um, maybe you're gonna go uh, with your lateral hop, shuffle back, lateral hop, shuffle back, low stance hold. Maybe you'll get through Maybe you only get through one rep each way and then now you're starting to get sloppy, you're starting to make mistakes like I even did on the first set. Then take about a two minute rest and then come back to it with quality and focus. And then your measure of improvement is going to be, wow, when I started I could really only get through the, that first, those first repetitions with quality. Now I can get through that whole first set with quality or I can get through that whole first set and do my RBH holds with quality and then I take a little rest. So rest isn't the devil <laughs> and it doesn't mean you're weak. It's what we need so that we can let our muscles kind of get ahead of the game a little bit and then continue to practice with quality. We don't have a game tomorrow. You don't have to worry about it. Take your time to build that quality. So that's habit number six, where most pro goalies that I've met at camps and training camps get a failing grade because they're not spending enough time building that fatigue resistance by training in these low static awkward positions. So now you're gonna get a leg up on them. It's something you can work on. We didn't use any equipment whatsoever. So there's no excuses to not do this. Gang, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you subscribe, hit the bell so you know about brand new videos like habit number seven before anyone else. Catch you next time.